Lindsay and I'm here with part two of my art supplies and uh, other colouring materials. So in the first boxes we have soft pastels. Now these are just a, a pretty cheap brand. There's 12 in there. I actually don't like the feel of them. So I'll open them up have a look. They come with a nice little cover. I've used them, but I just don't like that chalky feel. It just makes me cringe. So you can scrape a little bit off with a razor or a craft knife and put it on a piece of paper and rub it around with a cotton bud or a fluffy ball and then put it on your pictures as a, just a quick and easy background. We've got the Faber-Castell oil pastels. Now these you usually need some sort of blending agent like Gamsol in order to blend them out. Now they do break a bit. This one comes with a little tool that you can use with it. It's in the shape of a cute little fish. And of course you can see that they've broken a bit. And I only got these from the, the local supermarket so it's, they break quite easily. Like many of our art materials, but you can do a whole picture with those and get some nice effects. I've got some gelatos that I haven't used yet from Faber Castell. Again, really good for backgrounds. 100 pack of eyeshadows. So, this is obviously my background box. And I have used these, although it doesn't look like I have. I just got those from one of those discount shops, so they weren't expensive. It was before I bought pastels, so you get a nice little range of colours in there. A hundred colours, and they've got like the metal and sparkly. And, you know, just for backgrounds. These are my pan pastels. I've got two sets only. So this one is the pastels. And... These ones are all blues, and these are my favourites, but they're quite expensive compared to the other cheaper products that I showed you. They're so lovely and soft, you know, super soft. So I've got the blues to do like skies and things, and when you buy these little sets of five, you get the tools down the bottom there that you can use. Well, I did with that one and with this one as well. And these are the pretty pastels. So I bought this for, you know, some of those colouring books like Colours Make You Happy. And it's very sort of easy to imagine it in pastels. I've only got these just recently, so I haven't opened them yet. And these are some tools that you can buy for your pan pastels. So they're basically little spatula type things. You don't need to have these. You can use a cotton bud and you just dip it in to the pan pastel and you can use it to do larger areas or fine areas and they come with these little replacement nibs I've actually washed those, I've put them in a wash bag and um, just popped them in the washing machine now these are my pebbles chalks they've got a chalky feel to them as well they're a lot cheaper than the pan pastels which is good and they come with these little cotton pom pom type things which I've also washed in a little wash bag as well and what you do is you get this tool and you pick up what size pom pom you want and you can see that I've used these pom poms before and dip it into your colour so you've got two different tones and then just rub it around onto your background so quick and easy, you can mix up the colours and make rainbow effects. There's people that do amazing things just with these. And they come in a range of colours. Now these are my, it looks like I've got cocaine dust or something down there, but it's just uh, pan pastel dust. These are the Distress Crayons from Tim Holtz. So I bought these to do backgrounds as well. And you apply these and... You can use water to dilute them, but to be honest, in all my experiments, what I found worked best was using a baby wipe 
and just wiping it across and that made a much nicer effect but it might stay in the paper. Now it didn't with mine but you know always test these things out first. So I've got some gel pens here. I've actually got a lot of those. These are just from Audi supermarkets. They put them on special around Christmas time and they're actually really good. They're only a couple of dollars and they're very juicy. They tend to last a long time. Now I don't have any of the fancy gel pens that are popular in the US because I don't really sell them in Australia and to get them over here is just you know, too expensive for what I want to spend on gel pens. But for Australians, you know, keep an eye out at Christmas time. These are like glitter ones and uh, metallic ones and then normal ones. So they are very juicy and, uh, you know, for $2 or so, they're very nice. And I've got a couple packets of these because my other half keeps buying them. So I don't find these to be very long lasting. They tend to run out of... Uh, ink just as soon as you're in the middle of a big picture and then you're, you're scrambling to find another one. But they're only cheap and cheerful. Now these are also from Audi supermarkets. This is uh, the ones that they have when they have their back to school sales. So what I normally do is wait until back to school or Christmas is finished and then they reduce them and they usually have plenty of stock left over. And so these are their uh, scholar ones, which actually, they're not bad. So I am far by, by any means a gel pen connoisseur, but they do tend to work well and scribble out well. Of course, they're not going to do it when I'm on camera. You know, they're going to look all scratchy. But I do like, though, in the US, you tend to get a lot of uh, gel pens that have refills, and that would be super handy because I always tend to run out of ink when I'm in the middle of a picture. But I've got quite a few packets of these so I should be able to start something and finish it before it runs out of ink. These are just some Yubi pens. They have these in Australia at Officeworks and in the US as well. And they're just a, a cheap gel pen. They're just cheerful and cheap. But they do have really good ink flow on them. So they're useful to have in like black or gold. I think I've got a silver one somewhere. And they're only like $2 for the packet. And these are also the UV retractable highlighters. I think these were only a dollar. So with the highlighters, what you can do is... Use it as your base colour. So you lay down that, and I know it looks super bright, but when you add pencil over it, you can create a gorgeous effect without doing as much work. So it's just like the pencils over markers technique that uh, Peter Hewitt's got a great video on. But you can uh, also use highlighters as well. You can just not use normal highlighters too. So these are my first Prisma colours. I bought these by mistake. They're on sale in Australia when we were on holiday. And I thought Prisma Colour Premier, I thought that was actually the pencils. So then when I got home, I realised that they were the watercolours. But they're actually one of my favourite watercolours. Even though there's only 12 in the set, they're really creamy. They're just lovely and creamy. Now, they're full sets. I think they've got more colours than the 12 that I've got here. But um, they're full sets. I would like to have one day because I love the softness and the creaminess of these 12. But... They've lasted me well and they're on special for like $20 in Australia, which is actually a good price. And so I picked those up and, and rather than take them back and get the other ones, I just kept them. So these are my uh, Gansai Tambi Starry colours, so they're the metallics. These look great on colouring pages, but generally you can't see how pretty they are because of the 
you know, the lighting when you photograph things, but they are gorgeous. And you can get these also in a pastel type colour set as well. And some other colour ranges, I think, but they're not as widely available. So we've got these beautiful pans. And you can even just rub it onto your finger and it comes off a bit. So we've got white gold, light gold, champagne gold, yellow gold, red gold, blue gold. So lovely for just adding some little effects there on your pages. But don't expect them to come up and look as pretty as they do when you photograph them on Instagram or something. Just don't tend to catch the light that well. This is a magic watercolour sponge eraser, so it removes any unwanted watercolour paint. So it sort of like picks it up and sucks it off if you've put it in the wrong spot. Now I think it was cheaper to buy a four pack uh, than just buy one. So this is my watercolour type box here. So these are some of the Caran d'Ache Neo Colour 2 that are, are in the now discontinued 128 set. So I went looking for those. I've got three packets of these. I don't know where the other one is. It'll turn up somewhere along this path. And um, so I got those so I could make up the 128 colours that were in the original set that's now been discontinued. So these are some Aquaflow pencil um, markers. They're from Nuvo or Tonic. And they're a watercolour brush. You get them in a three pack. They're a bit tricky to bring the colour down from memory. It sort of bursts out. So they're a bit like your zigs and whatnot. And uh, for memory, you've got to do something over here. They come with like a little water barrel. And I think, yes, we have to take the top off. Which, of course, I can't get off at the moment, but... You get the idea and you get them in a couple of different colours. And I've got a set of cards from the same company that are foil with like silver foil and stuff on them. And I uh, wanted to use these pastel selection from the Spring Meadow range to colour in my little cards. These are just some cheap paintbrushes. I think I bought them because they had pretty colours on them. And a little packet of Twinkling H20 watercolours. They come in these tiny little pots. I have used them, but it doesn't look like I've made a dent in them. And you can get these in all different colours. Sometimes they're a little bit hard to get the Twinkling H20s, but they're very cute and they've got lovely colours. And uh, this one... Is the uh, I don't know which one this one was, but there's six in the, the range. So, of course, there's other colors in the range. I'm just talking about the ones that I purchased. We've got purple and that blue, and a lovely bright orange down there. But you can get them in pink pastels and all sorts, and they are lovely. And they've got a real shimmer sparkle to them. Now these are my Mikador watercolours. I bought these. They're an Australian brand. So there's 12 colours in there. And they also make Koenor products as well. So you would think that they would be cheaper in Australia. But the Koenor products aren't. And we don't have the same range. Uh, like the Magic Tritones etc. Uh, so we have to still get those from overseas, and unless you want to pay a higher price in Australia. But they're just a nice little set of pans. And because they're, you know, made by uh, or owned, they also own Koenor, I think they're pretty similar to what the Koenor ones are, but I don't have them. But I do like the way it folds up because you can use that to mix out your watercolours or mix in there. And then you just undo the daisy wheel. And it's nice and purse-sized if you want to um, take it travelling with you. Now these are from Officeworks in Australia. They're just their large range of watercolours. And these were about $10. And so 
just got a bigger range there of colours and you can mix them up there in the little pans. So very cute and you can see that I went through a little bit of a watercolour phase and I'd like to spend a little bit more time learning watercolours and whatnot but I haven't got the chances yet but I do have a nice book on watercolours I might have shown before in a, another video and I was hoping to really get into that but life got in the way. So here we have uh, just like little embellishments and bits. So glitter paint that you can just get from the discount shop in Australia for $2. Some background uh, colour paint, acrylic paints. And I bought this for an experiment. It didn't work out so I won't tell you what it was. And so just they're great for backgrounds. Then I've just got some plain acrylic paint again for backgrounds. This is uh, glossy accents and you you colour it in and then you put a little dab of this over and it produces like a little gloss to it which is quite cute. We've got some stickles and some Christmassy type colours there and over here a few more. I think you know the sort of white or the clear stickles if you don't want to buy a lot they're the sort of ones that will add a nice little glittery touch we've got some liquid pearls which is also a lovely product it's sort of like stickles but it produces like a little paint type metallic sheen I actually did get this one to produce like little pearls on something. So it flips up a little bit, a little bit metallic, and you can uh, dab that onto your pictures. And I've got this, which is Jewel Drops. And it adds dimension, uh, translucent tints to your paper craft products. Now, like all of these things, you can get these in all different colours. These are just ones that I bought. So it's only got a very faint blue tinge to it, very faint. And then it's got this like glossy little layering and finish on it. We've got the pearl and pen, which again, you can get this in different colours. And again, it produces like a little metallic finish. And it's huge, the container, compared to some of the others. Ooh, and I really did glob that out. And so, lovely and pinky and metallic -y and sparkly. And also, you're getting a little bit of dimension there as well. So these are silver paints and uh, they're actual, oh gosh, the lid. It comes with like an eyedropper and it really is very silvery. I'll just put a bit down here. It comes out very watery. You do need to shake up the bottle a little bit more than what I have. It's got a lovely sheen and it can work out a little bit cheaper than buying the fancier things. I bought this from the art shop. Uh, $11 it was Australian. But really shake it up and it's like a silver paint. So also good for adding those highlights. And you can see down the bottom when you've really shaken it up what a silver paint it is little bit watery on there. This is a like a chalkboard spray so I thought this would be fun on backgrounds so ooh, to create like that chalkboard background -y type effect and you give it a spray. To be honest I don't know that I'm going to use it that much. I, I don't know I think I liked it more when I seen it online rather than in real life as often happens. And this is a similar product, it's a gold uh, glimmer mist, 
And this one I do like more. You put down, um, you can use it just on its own, but it's nice when you put down a black background or something like that, like an acrylic paint, and then you spray over it with the gold. You do have to wait for it to dry, but then you'll see all the lovely little gold sparklies in the background there, and as it's starting to dry, you'll see those come out. So it's nice if you just want a pop of gold, but you do need to really shake it up uh, if it's been sitting there for a while. Now these are just some cheap little things from the $1 shop that I bought for some experiment. Some Winsor Newton gold. There's a big on gold over here. Don't have any jewellery, but um, what well, I do have, but I always lose it. That's why I can't wear the good stuff because um, I always lose it all the time. So it's a really, really great gold and just pop some, you know, on a little palette. And you've got this fantastic gold that you could use on all of your pictures that need it. And these little tubes are only a couple of dollars. And often that can work out far more effective than buying other products, depending on how much gold you like to use. Have you heard a little tapping at the door? That was my dog wanting to come in. So this is a diamond glaze and it's similar to the other products that I showed you that did the glossy accents. It comes in a very tiny tight little bottle and you just put it over your work that you've done usually markers or something like that and it gives it like a little glazy sheen now these are my 3d crystal color lacquer pens they're both secure but they're not secure uh, the japanese brand that we're familiar with with wink of stella etc these are secure hobby craft and they produce like a 3d glossy effect in transparent colours so I don't know if you can see that on camera but it does produce like this 3D glossy effect and I bought these because I really wanted the Secura glaze pens which are very hard to get in Australia and every time I've ordered them from Amazon my order ends up getting cancelled because they don't have them or they don't ship to Australia or whatever um, and so I bought those as a substitute. Then, of course, I found a place that had them in Australia, but they were extremely expensive, so those ones were a lot cheaper. Now, these are the Yubi Glitter Glue Pens. They're very cheap. They're a couple of dollars uh, from Officeworks in Australia, but this brand is also available in the US as well. Now, I have to say these, I bought these as a cheap stickles substitute. They're a glitter pen. Now, I do have to say, I don't like these that much. I think sometimes you get what you pay for. You know, some products work out better than others that are budget. But for me, these ones didn't. I found them very gluggy and they globby. And, you know, compared to the stickles, the stickles were far better. You know, I'll still use these, but I won't use them on anything that I really, really like. I'll just, you know, use them to have fun with on pictures because I don't enjoy using them. This is the Faber-Castell glass bead glitter gel. It looks like sort of globby snow in there, but um, anyway, just take a bit off over here. And it's it's a glitter gel, but to be honest, it's not that glittery. I was wanting it to use for snow effects, so it does dry a little bit glittery, but to be honest, I think there's other products that if you were trying to get that effect, would be better. So here's another that I bought to get that sort of snow effect and this one's called glitter snow and this one's like lovely little soft peaked cream 
that's been whipped and you do get a much more globular effect with this one. So you can use it for, you know, if you want to make like actual three dimensional snow on your pictures or create that little snowy effect without doing the actual technique to get snow. So it's called glitter snow. It's got a little bit of glitter in it. Nice and globby. You can see some sparkles around the edge there if you look. So this is some Wow embossing powder and you pop this on and then apply heat to it and um, you get a nice little pop it on with over a special uh, glue which I've got somewhere around here. Then you apply um, heat with your heat gun and then it will melt and you'll get like that embossed look and uh, I thought that would be great for like quotes or just you know little accent pieces on a colouring page. So here's some bits and pieces, some needleball erasers, Faber-Castell erasers, the Derwent battery operated eraser that you can use to get out some small little things. Now you know you can get little replacement rubbers for it so they're pretty good value. And here's one of my needleball erasers that's uh, got stuck to the box. So this is a Prismacolor needleball eraser and it's actually my least favourite out of all of the ones that I've got. I find it very difficult to work with but that's just me. These are some little, I've been testing little ergonomic pencil holders. I think I mentioned before they get a lot of wrist pain. I've been trying little different pencil grips that you can use in order to uh, try and improve that experience in your hands when you're colouring. This is the eraser pen from Derwent, which is just like the electric one, but it's just a single nib and you can run it straight through. Now, I haven't used that one because I've got a Tombow one as well around here somewhere, which I've been using that one instead. So Lyra Eraser, my new uh, m &R pencil sharpener, my Bronze & Neal pencil sharpener, and my Stedler one. These three are actually some of my favourite pencil sharpeners going. My favourite eraser is the Mono from Tombow. This will erase anything, so you've got to be a bit careful with it. It's a sand eraser, so it'll erase dried up intents. It'll erase anything, but as I said, you've got to be careful because it'll, you know, take half your paper out if you're too heavy-handed with it. A syringe uh, just for dripping colour into things. The uh, Kum sharpener, it's got... Uh, automatic you put the pencil in and then it'll come to a tip like that and then you can give it another run around for a long point. That Bruns and Neal um, pencil sharpener that I showed you when you get it, it comes in a little box with two replacement blades as well so beautifully uh, presented that eraser. Now this is my other Kum sharpener yes it's even the same colour So I've got two because, you guessed it, I forgot that I already had one. I thought I had one, but I couldn't find it, so I ordered another one, and then of course I found it. So you never, never have enough erasers, can you? So this is my pencil extender from Derwent. I haven't needed that one yet. I've got another one lying around somewhere. My Prismacolor uh, pencil sharpener, not one of my favourites either, the Tegal. You know, I do like this pencil sharpener, but I like the uh, other ones more. My eye point pencil sharpener, which is an electric one, and my Derwent Super Point, which is a manual one. Now, why so many sharpeners, you ask? Because when I do pencil reviews, I'd like to be able to sharpen with different sharpeners to show you. And currently, what I sharpen with when I've done pencil reviews is usually just my Stedlow or my Brunzanil or my Tegal. So I'd like to, you know, have 
that range to be able to show you different sharpness. My Brusho uh, watercolour paints, so you, these are basically coming all different colours, this is just a set that I got. They come in these dinky little bottles and um, I can never get things open when I'm on camera, truly. Anyway, I'll show you on the pictures. It's like a crystals and you sprinkle them on and then add water. And I thought they would be fabulous for background. So I got a set of like blue green and there's different techniques that you can use here so you can achieve different things. The sprinkle technique was the one that I was planning on doing but you can do it with bubble wrap. And because we're packing at the moment, I've got enough bubble wrap to sink a battleship so I might try that one. But I thought it'd be great for, you know, backgrounds um, to create looks like that. So you can get all different colours. I chose like a blue-green spectrum because, you know, I was thinking sea and uh, sky that I wanted to emulate. So, yeah, these are super cute and they'll go a long way. And if you're into card making or something like that, then you can use them for those sorts of things as well and create super easy things. You can get them in five packs, you can buy them individually, you can buy them in larger packs, and you can buy them in different colour spectrums. So, my Faber Castell arrays are another ergonomic thing. This is the Koanor uh, pencil sharpener. This looks like miscellaneous earrings, change, and whatever else. <laughs> Gosh almighty. Uh, I don't know. I don't know why that's even in there. I must have wanted the jar for something. Um, Faber Castell, Stablo, uh, Fiskers, Eraser. Uh, I don't know what that one is. And just, uh, you know, one from the dollar shop, I think. Now these are, so this is my empty Copic marker. Uh, you might see that recipe that I did for the Tombow blender fluid. So what you can do if you don't have a Tombow blender pen is actually fill up an empty Copic or an empty uh, Molotow marker or uh, there's other brands in the US that you can buy empty pumps for. So the good thing about these is they've got different nib sizes. So this is a thick nib. So this is a bullet nib. Copic come with a brush nib and... A chisel tip so depending on what you want you could fill up make your blender recipe and fill up the marker with that and uh, move on now the thing I like about the Molotow blender or the marker pump empty pump markers is they've got the bearing in there so that you can easily push it out and it doesn't all clog up at the end now, this is my Molotow uh, paint pen. Oh no, that's an empty one. Where is my... <laughs> empty, empty. Anyway, remind me, give me a tap on the shoulder, remind me to show you my Molotow uh, white pen, because I like it far more than my Posca white pen. It's my absolute favourite. So that's it for that tub. Let's go grab another one. So this is my marker box. So these are the Spectrum Noir Illustrator markers. I got these when they first came out. You can see my review of those. And uh, they only sold them in the UK when they were first released. So luckily, a very lovely friend from the colouring world sent them on to me. So I had them sent to their address and then they had lovely packaged them up and sent them over to me which was super nice and there we have uh, three sets of 12 so you can see the full review of that I've done it before I keep them in the box because they're tonally compatible so everything that work goes in this box works together And then there's another set of 12. You can see the colours up there on the front. Now these have got, uh, they've got an ergonomically designed barrel. Which does take a little bit of getting used to. 
and then they've got the little small nib which is super handy and then the larger brush nib. Now you can get these in the graphic, I think it's called, style which has the chisel nib on it as well. So there's six more in there, six in there. They're very juicy so I like to use these for things like mandalas and you know just mandalas and other sorts of things, patterns, things like that. You can uh, get refills for them and you can replace the brush nib. I find that in Australia though that the refills are quite hard to get and also in Australia I find that the brush nibs are quite hard to get. Um, there's a couple of online stores in Australia that do have them but uh, I you know, often would just get them from overseas rather than in Australia. As yet I haven't had to replace anything uh, on these as well. Now I do also have some Copics and I thought I had 20 Copics but I actually have slightly more than that. There's an online store in Australia that you get free shipping if you order over $50 and I'm a sucker for free shipping so I often throw in some Copic markers because they're like $5 or the Copic Chows and to get my order up to the $50 and so I've ended up with more Copics than what I thought that I did have. I thought I had 20, I think I've got 70 but I've never been good at math. So here's the uh, Wink of Stella from Kuretake. Now these are, come in different colours as well as the clear Wink of Stella that you can use to add a little glitter sparkle to your pictures and the silver and the gold, great for those crispy Christmas pics. But also you can get it in other colours. Now when I did my uh, do-it-yourself sparkle pen video I picked up, I think it was the pink from here and of course it didn't work and that's why I'm just going to make my own sparkle pens from now on because it just works out too expensive for me when uh, the product runs out of ink really quickly. Now that's the blue and you know it's not that sparkly to be honest. These would be good for like little fine details but they're really not as sparkly as other products like stickles or just using the clear on its own or using that do-it-yourself recipe. This is another Wink of Stella brush which is just the clear. Now the clear is always great to have. It goes on clear, you can apply it over anything. You can see that little sparkle on the brush nib. So suitable for anything. You don't really need to have the colours unless you specifically want them. If you're on a budget, clear is the way to go or just make it yourself I think. But everyone's different, everyone's got a different budget, so you just, you know, bear that in mind, what works for you. So here's some other Sharpies, Now I do have to say I have more Sharpies in this. They're in the big container that's got a lion on it, and because they're so big, we put them in storage already. My hubby is a sucker for buying me Sharpies. He, he kind of thinks that I need, you know, all of these packets when I don't, so... You know, because I'm happy that he's taking an interest in my hobby, you know, I don't say anything. So I've ended up with far more Sharpies than uh, I I can use. But anyway, that's all right. You know, he often likes using these as well. So these were some sort of discount packet where you got two black ones. So he often uses those as well. And you get all these different colours. They're great for doing mandalas and... You know, some people use them for skin, etc. And, you know, people do amazing stuff with Sharpies. So he tends to buy these when those back-to-school sales are on. And afterwards, they're on discount. So when he's at the supermarket, he's like, oh, well, these are only, you know, $5, so, I'll, you know, I'll pick up some. So he's got me the neon, the 80s glam, uh, just some general ones. And I mean, we always use Sharpies, and I use them for those um, Mandela and Pattern type books. Now, the Bic Markets, you know, I like these as well. They're, they come in a nice range of colours. They're slightly different from the Sharpies. And again, these have only ever cost me a few dollars because 
I've usually bought these when uh, those back to school sales are finished. I like that you can get the ultra fine, which is really good for those finer details. And you can get a different range of nibs and whatnot. So, you know, I've used over the years my Bix and my Sharpies on so many different patterns and mandalas and whatnot. I find them quite relaxing. But I only use them on, you know, books that I don't really want to blend or do anything like skin or whatever. If it's skin, I'll usually reach for my Copics or my Spectrum Noirs. So these are just some highlighter sharpies. You can put these down and then put pencil over them. And these ones have a smear guard on them so they don't smear everywhere. Now these big markets, I've got two packets of them. I've used them so much. And um, one of them, I like purple, I think it was. I used it so much it dried out. Uh, so I was lucky enough to, at the discount shop in Australia, they had some open stock and I was able to replace it. So I'd never seen the open stock of the big markets in Australia. But these ones are both the same. They're two packets of 36. So it's a great range of colours. And I got these from a Black Friday sale a couple of years ago. So they've lasted. And they were like $10, which was super cheap. Um, no, it wasn't Black Friday. It was the after-school sales. So when all the kids have gone back to school and the shops have bought too much stock... Um, and they discount everything and they were like ten dollars for 36 which in Australia that's a great price I'm sure in the US you have some sales that would be better but ten Australian dollars for 36 markers is really good so I've got some other markers here these are just from the two dollar shop and they were two dollars so they're like sharpies they're handy to have very cheap they don't really work that well this is basically the box of um, the cheaper products I think from memory these are Milan ones I don't like these at all I find the brush nib on them they've got a like a fine nib on them they're not too bad they're very cheap they're only a couple of dollars and Personally, I'd probably buy something else instead now that I've tried them. But they are a fine tip, so they're useful to have around. These are the Montmartre Fine Tip Markers, which is an Australian sort of art company. I don't know if they're Australian, actually. But you can get them in Australia all the time. They come in a plastic case. Now, I do notice with these ones, other as opposed to my other ones that the tip does tend to dry up pretty quickly but of course you know when you do something on camera it proves me wrong completely so they're a fine tip there you get those from the discount shop in Australia or any sort of you know stationery art shop that stocks Montmartre products so a nice little fine set there and they're only $7 Another pack of those Milan markers. I think my partner must have got those for me. The Giotto Turbo Glitter Pens. So these are similar to the Wink of Stella, but they've actually got more glitter in them than the Kuretake ones that I showed you earlier. See how much more glittery that is than the Kuretake ones? And these are actually cheaper but more glittery and a lot more liquid comes out than with those Kuretake ones that tend to, well mine have, tended to dry up a bit. Now there's eight in here and these were from memory about five or six dollars at Office Works in Australia. Just some Faber-Castell uh, connector pens, some markers, some squeeze brushes. These have got paints in them. I always tell things that my husband has bought for me because they're on special. He loves a bargain. Uh, these are just some cheap O pencils markers from the supermarket in Australia. They're not very good, but you know, if you're on a budget, you can of course use these things. But when I say they're not very good, 
I don't like them that much, but look, they've got a lovely thin point on them. They'd be great for doing mandalas and stuff. They certainly don't compare with my Copics or anything like that, but they're great for just doing, you know, cheap and cheerful pictures, mandalas and patterns and whatnot. And they do have that lovely little fine point on them. And they're only like $2 from the supermarket. So there's plenty of budget items that you can get. Um, now these ones are from Ikea, the furniture shop. They've got a really thick barrel on them. They're okay. They produce an alright colour. They've got a very thick nib on there. They are in the kids section, so they're just, you know, student grade. But, you know, they're fun and they're only a couple of dollars. It depends on what your budget is, you know, what sort of things that you want to, to buy and how often you see yourself colouring and all the rest of it, how much you spend. These are just some cheap ones from the $2 shop. I think my hubby actually bought these for himself uh, just to write things down with, but they've ended up out here with me. Uh, these are the Mapped Colorites brushes. So they've got a brush nib on them and lovely colors. Goes down just on cheap copy of paper, but I love that brush nib. And they're very low cost in Australia at least. They're not a lot of money, a few dollars. You can get them from the supermarket or from office works. Some of these UB chalk markers. I thought that they would be more chalky to be honest, but they weren't. I wanted, uh, I've got some chalk books, you know, those botanical colouring books that got a chalk background. And I thought, how cool would it be if I could use chalk paint on these? But really, they don't sort of look that chalk boardy. They don't have that sort of chalk feel to them. When they dry, um, they do get a little bit more chalky than what you see here, but they don't really have that chalk look. They look just like every other marker to be honest. And I tried them in the chalkboard colouring book and it just looked a bit bland to be honest. So these are the Spectrum Noir art liners. I did review these. Spectrum Noir sent them to me and they come in at like little fine tips. The art liners, like the really fine liners, they only come in a limited colour range which is a shame. And this is to do calligraphy with it as well, so you can learn how to create these gorgeous letters. Now, you do really need to buy a related product to really enjoy this, which is a like a stencil thing where you can practice the strokes. I mean, you, you obviously can learn from the video as well, don't get me wrong, but it's sort of easier if you've got the stencil and can practice the strokes. Now, I've been having trouble finding that in Australia, so I've sort of put that aside uh, until I can get that stencil because I definitely need something to follow along. So the last thing I've got left in that little storage cabinet is some um, crayons. And why do I have so many? Because they're only a dollar on sale after the back to school sale finished. So I wanted to make some of those crayon pictures where they melt them down. I've also used them in a couple of videos on colouring with crayons that you might have already seen. If not, I'll link to them below. But you know, crayons are the cheapest colouring material that you can use. And you can blend these and work with them and they're great if you've got a hand injury. But they're also great for creating other art with as well. So that's it for the storage cabinet. Now we'll go on and have a look at all the little baskets and little cup holders and whatnot and uh, you know see what else I've got hiding here in the colouring cave. So here's the rest of my treasures. So I've got my Tombow jewel markers and I really like these. I've had them for a while. They're water based. Jewel tip so you got the thin nib on one end and then the brush nib on the other. I use them quite a lot and the only thing that I've run out of is the blender pen that comes with it and now that I make my own do-it-yourself blender pen recipe I don't need to buy them as much 
The whole set of 96 comes with this plastic container. Now when I first got it, I put all the pens in there and I picked up the container like I'm doing now. And of course the whole thing just fell apart, you know. I think it took me two or three goes to learn because I'm a bit slow like that. So what my partner did was glue it together. So if you do get that stand, you know, your natural instinct will probably be to pick it up. It just falls apart if you do that. So just glue it down so that you can move it around. The other thing is it's sort of like Ikea, you know. You push your pens in there and there's always like a missing hole or you've got too many and you can't find, you know, you've always got like leftover things and you're walking around trying to find, um, or looking around trying to find which hole the pen belongs to. So it's like putting together Ikea furniture. You always seem to have bits left over. Well, I always do. But um, I think it's because of what I've got two blender pens that these don't all fit in. So I've got that shoved in. So they're water-based. Then I've got the Kuretake Zig Clean Colour. And these are also water-based. There's only 80 in this set, whereas there's 96 in the Tombow. But what's different about these is this brush nib. It's very fine. But it splays out, so you can go fine. And then you can fatten it out to make a thicker line. And the colours are different from the Tombow ones. They seem to be a lot more vibrant and they're a different actual colour. So they're both great. We've got a different brush nib on this one. And the Tombows are great, as are the Zigs for using with uh, lettering if you like lettering and they're also great in your coloring books i love using them i haven't used them for a while so i must get to that now i did find that the zigs when i was using them as a true watercolor and uh diluting them that they actually worked a lot better if i bought the right paper so I went through quite a lot of papers trying to find the one that works for me. Now I'm saying what works for me, it might not work for you, but I ended up using Archer's Cold Press Water Paper, which is actually, it's quite smooth and it actually is the sort of better watercolour that I had that I've used now. I haven't used it that often, but I did buy a number of different brands and that was the one that I ended up liking the most and it you could put the water on it, you could dilute the pens and it still looked lovely and smooth finish. So I liked that one. If you've got any other recommendations, I'd love to hear them. So I've got a ton of different colour wheels here. These are the ones that come with the Tombow dual brush markers that I just showed you. So a little blending kit. Comes with a piece of plastic and the colour wheel and for memory a little spritzer bottle that you can use now you don't need to get this just any bit of plastic will do to use your tombos or your zigs or you could buy one of these things it's just like a rubber stamp block it's a bit of plastic or you could use a cd cover or what i've been using a lot of is i had some of those cheap iphone uh, screen protector things that you get from the discount shop and you get like five kind of hard plastic and uh, I've been using those quite a lot because uh, they were ones for my old iPhone they don't fit the new one so I've been using those just to mix up colours but any sort of bit of hard plastic will do so then this is a quilters colour wheel and it's it, good for people like me that really don't know colours that well and of course I've got it in a smaller size as well because I've got I had the bigger one and what you do is you can place it on your picture and sort of pick out the colour that you're trying to work with or use and match it up with complementary colour schemes and you choose the little numbers over here so we'll look at it one day in a bit more de detail I've got so many colour wheels then I've got this one, which shows you the effects of adding black or white, tinting it, or greys. 
and you can move it around. Now with that other quilting one, this tonal estimator goes with it and you put this like little red plasticky thing over the picture that you're colouring or your quilt that you're making and it will estimate the tones for you. It's got some instructions on the back there. Now a couple of these I had because I used to make quilts but I haven't used all the features in them by any means. So that's those. And I'm chewing on a lolly at the moment because my voice is just caving in. So these are some iridescent mediums that I bought to make my sparkle pens. So one's a Winsor & Newton and one's a Liquitex brand. You can see the video of that, your DIY sparkle pens. Here's some more of those Caran d'Ache Neo colours that I bought open stock to make up the full set of 128 that were in the largest set but the 128 is now being discontinued. Now I am still missing like 10 colours or so from that original 128 but I haven't been looking for them to be honest, I've had other things to think about. So here's some gold embossing powder and I showed you, I think, red earlier. You just uh, stick it on with the wow glue or any sort of embossing glue and you sprinkle it on and then apply a heat gun to it and it'll be raised effect, which I think will be really nice, especially for Christmas cards and things like that. Here's uh, a little sponge. I've got a couple of these. If you've got like a wet medium, so maybe you've made a wash with your Tombow markers or you've made a wash with Intense or watercolours or Brusho, anything like that. And you can just dip the sponge onto it and, you know, make quick little background effects. So they're just cheap and easy from the craft shop. Now here's my cute little pencil case. It's got kitty cats on it. I got it off eBay. So I think um, Sarah in our Facebook group, she had one. And I didn't buy it straight away. I spent some time thinking about whether I wanted a pencil case. But anyway, I finally succumbed and bought one. And um, of course, the biggest decision was, you know, which pattern to get. But I went with the kitty cats because there's a number of different patterns. And you can fit up to two pencils in these little elasticized things here. And it sort of folds over like a book. And then you can pack it up like a backpack. And it's got little space in the front to put your pencil sharpener or anything else that you might need. So nice and handy, easy to carry. I do need to pop my pencils in there though. Now here's another one that I bought from Amazon. For my pencils and I need to put them away in here. It's got single little holders here with the elastic on it. Folds out nicely like a book. I can't remember if this is 150 or 160 in this one. There's also space here to put like your rubber or blender pens, whatever else you might need. Okay, so here we have some clear gesso, two different brands. Uh, and I bought that to experiment with using gesso on your colouring pages. You can see the video of that. I'll link to it below. And here's some um, Joe Sonia's just in black. And I bought the black to use as a background and then I could spray that gold spray that I showed you earlier on the back, on the black and uh, make it look very pretty. So here are my Marco Renoirs. So I've got the complete set of these. I, I don't know. I know a lot of people love these pencils, but they're not my favorites. I'll use them but I don't feel any great love for them. I don't really like the pigment and I find them very crumbly. You know, they're just not for me. And I think sometimes, you know, you have something that's just not for you. And for me, it's not my favorite pencil. Now I bought this uh, Spectrum Noir set of little racks like these to store my Spectrum Noir markers in and I thought um, that they would fit all in there, but of course, you know, I was wrong. And they didn't fit in there. This is what they look like without anything in there. 
And so I thought I'd keep the markers in the packets that they came in, which I showed you earlier. And then I would know which ones tonally went with each other. And I'd put my Copics in this rack. So of course I clearly underestimated how many Copic markers I actually have. So I've got these ones, which are the mixture of the chow and the sketch. The chow markers are the smaller ones. I have a brush nib one end and the other end they have a chisel tip. They have less colours in the range than the sketch and they hold less fluid. Great thing about these markers and the Spectrum Noirs is that they're refillable and you can change the nibs. So when you refill one of these you get like 20 pens out of it. So although they're a bit more to buy first up than Bix or Sharpies, you get more use out of them in the long term. And these are the sketch markers. So brush nib and chisel tip. I think there's about 370 odd colours in the Copic range. Some you can get uh, in the chow and the sketch, but only all the colours are available in the sketch. The chow, the smaller ones, has less colours available and they're cheaper to buy. So you'll, you'll see in here that um, I've got a mixture of them because I always get the cheaper ones. I was saying earlier when I order things and it's like $5 or $10, $5 for one of these or $6, $7 for one of these. So if I want to get free shipping, I'll often add one or two of these to the order just so that I can get that free shipping. Yeah, I'm obsessed with free shipping. So I've got some greens and some blues and purples. And these ones over here. And they're too big for the tray because the tray is meant to be for the Spectrum Noir markers, but... I'm using these in here. Now you see that I'm storing both these and the Spectrum Nars horizontally because uh, that's what you're meant to do. If you store them like that vertically then all the fluid will just run to one end and when you go to use your marker it'll come out in a big juicy puddle maybe if you've got a lot of fluid in there. So now I've got these colours. And these ones. And then the first layer of it was basically my skin and hair colours. Now this is what a refill looks like. I, I tend to use a lot of this colour. It's the, uh, it's the lightest flesh colour, E40. It's the lightest colour. You usually use it as a base before you use the skin colours if you want to do a lighter tone skin. And... I go through so much of this, so that's a refill to fill up one of the other markers. So when you get this, this fluid actually will fill it up 10 or 20 times or or one, one. So then these are the ones that I mainly use for skin tones or hair. So they're all in here. I might have a few others mixed in. So I've got some Spectrum Nars in there as well. And they're basically what I use all the time for skin and hair, so... Uh, we've got the Zero, which is the blender pen. Now, with these, they're not a blender pen like the pencil blender pen. They're more an eraser pen. They're more for taking ink off that you might have spilt or blobbed out of the lines. I've got some Spectrum Noir colours in there that shouldn't be in there, so I'll take those out. And a Spectrum Noir blender pen. And then the rest basically are the skin colour tones that I use if I'm doing skin or hair. So there's quite a few there. And there's also some greys and whatnot. Can't really hold them so that you can get a good idea. So there's quite a quite a little selection there. Only one refill, so I do need to start getting a couple of more skin and hair colour refills. What happened was I was in the middle of colouring a, a picture. I think I put a work in progress up on Instagram and I ran out of um, ink and I couldn't colour the rest of the picture 
and all the stores close by, the art shops, actually didn't have any in stock. So I had to wait like three weeks to to get that refill. So that's a, if you don't start collecting the refills, you might end up out of ink and not able to complete your picture. Now the thing with the Copics is that the ink is always the same. So sometimes, you know, with pencils or markers, depending on the the run that they do of the product, the colour may vary slightly, but the selling point with Copics is that it is always the same colour. So even though it's been, you know, two months now since I was working on that picture, I can still come back in with my refill ink and it will be exactly the same colour. There won't be any variation at all. Which is why these are, you know, widely used by card makers and in the olden days pre-computers, you know, architects used to use them a lot. I don't know if they still do, but, you know, they're widely used in the industry because they always retain their colour. So obviously if you're just doing colouring books, you know, you just want to have a good time and not spend a lot of money, these can add up because there's like 370 in the range. They range between $5 and $7 each. Sometimes you might get them on special if you're lucky. And I've actually seen them on the Facebook marketplace, etc. for $20 for like 12 because there's people that are just getting rid of their supplies. You can always get those and buy refills later if they're low on ink, but... They generally cost quite a bit of money, so you want to sort of, you know, know that you're going to enjoy using them before you start to commit to a set. Now, you often find a lot of uh, sets on Amazon, etc., so there's like 72 colours or whatever in a set. So often if you want to just build up the collection, I'd suggest that you go and do the free Hackers 101 course at Kit and Clouder. I'll link to it below. Kit and Clouder will help you just choose a range of colours that you need just to do your basics and see if you like using them and then you can build from there because the problem with the sets is the way Copics uh, work generally, so it's a general statement, is that you blend in the colour family, so this is BV, Blue Violet. And so that'll go with other colours in the BV family. So when you buy those sets of 72, etc., they've got a variety of colours, but they don't necessarily blend well together. So if you're doing skin and hair, you might not find that you have the lighter tone, the mid-tone, and the uh, darker tone in order to create a smooth blend. doesn't mean that you can't use them. It's just that you won't be able to achieve that effect as easily as if you bought them open stock. But anyway, um, you can do a free Marcus 101 course or you can, you know, do whatever you like, really. <laughs> um, so here's the Copic blender pen in the chow and here's that little Tombow blender, blending uh, mist thing that I was telling you about earlier. This comes in a blending kit packet from Tombow. Now you don't really need this, you can just buy a little aerosol spray thing that you can fill up at the discount shop. And there's my Spectrum Noir blender pen. I use these not to blend alcohol markers, I use them to blend pencils. But now that I'm just making my own uh, blending fluid, I use that instead. It works out so much cheaper. But I'll still use those up. So here's my uh, Keizu, a pencil sharpener. So it's made by the same people that make the Tegal. And here's my Factus rubber. It's black and uh, it's meant to be really good, to be honest. I still like my Tombow better than that one. So I love these cute little containers. I got them off eBay. They were like a dollar each. They look like little pencils. I've got them in different colours. So in this one I've got some just white gel pens, craft knife, silver gel pen, pilot erasable pen. I absolutely love these. I've been using them for years. Um, but I love them even more now that they come in all different colours. And you can see my review on those coloured ones. And here's some of the coloured ones. The great thing about them is they come in different colours, different nibs, and they're great for the fiddly bits. So if you go out of the lines a lot like I do, then you just use this rubber on the end. 
and erase it out and you get a lovely little picture or if you color in the semi dark like I do sometimes because we don't have good lighting in our lounge area for not for coloring anyway mood lighting so nice and romantic but not great for coloring so I then look at the picture in the daylight and <laughs> it looks absolutely terrible because I've gone over lines and missed things so these are great so especially for fiddly little mandalas or something like that you can uh, color away if you make a mistake just erase it you don't need to use the eraser that comes with the pen so like if you colored in pink you can just use this eraser on the end of the green one they, they don't go together so anything you do so they come in gel pens textures highlighters and uh, markers so huge range there now these are the sharpie stained so these are the fabric markers from sharpie so i've actually colored in a pair of sneakers somewhere with these before and they're just like using the pen but they've got a brush nib on them and the sharpie product is easy to hold for me it's a good size barrel nice and soft and you can just use them to paint fabric with so you might have a colouring design that's on a piece of fabric. You, do, you could use Intense, which will stick on the fabric. Or you could use the fabric-based Sharpies. And just while I've got it out, I'll show you some paper that I've been using to experiment with. I wanted something sort of low cost, but still better than copy paper. So I've been using the Quill 125 GSM. I tried it in the 200 and the 100, and for me, just like Goldilocks, the 125 was just right. But each to their own type thing. I, they do have it in a small packet of 10, so I did experiment with some smaller packets before I bought the large packet. And I've got some Express Blending card. I've got a couple of packets of this. This is what I use with my Copix and Spectrum Noir because it's specially designed for alcohol markers. It won't absorb into the paper. It makes colouring with alcohol markers a much better experience. This is just some craft card that I've got. And I'll often print out something from a PDF and I'll colour it on here on the toned colour. And then you get a sort of different look and a different experience. So when you're using your white pencil, it it shows a lot more and it's very highlighted as compared to if you're using it on just a white background. And like everyone, I've always got some little tubs full of miscellaneous. So these little tubs are from the kitchen section of IKEA. They're about $2. And what I did was buy a curtain rod from IKEA. And I, uh, well, I hubby bracketed underneath my bookshelf so that I could hang off all my treasures and another curtain rod to hang all my washi tape on so because I ran out of room in here so this little tub is full of just individual sharpies and bix and I've got some others lying around as well this one is filled with a variety of different white Pens. So we've got Poscas, we've got Secura Uni Balls, we've got Faber Castell, or this one's the Stationery Island chalk marker. We've got glitter Posca pens, all sorts of different ones. Now my favourite one, I've just got a general white paint pen. Now if you're on a budget, you can just get these white paint pens just from the two dollar shop. They're quite quite all right you don't need to buy anything super fancy just trying to find my favorite one so this is a faber castell one my favorite one is the molotov which i know must be around here somewhere there it is it's called the one for all and it's an acrylic one i really like this comes in a variety of nibs and it goes on a lot better than for me than the uh, Posca one. The Posca one tends to absorb into the page and I just can't seem to get it right. Whereas this one, when you dab it on, it actually goes on. You can actually see it and it doesn't absorb into the page. So I don't know if other people have that problem, but for me, I, I like it much better. And these are just some silver and gold, some fine liners, uh, different colors. Yeah. Combos and 
yeah, all sorts of different little fine liners, different colour poskas and different colour uni balls. I bought a lot of white pens because I could never achieve the look that other people got until I bought this one. It was about four dollars. So I got some miscellaneous things, an old uh, eyelash brush that I use just to brush things off with, or a little feather pen that I've got that I use just to brush some Prismacolor dust off with, uh, some glue sticks, my Disneyland pen that I got from Disneyland years ago with Sylvester on it, some of these pipettes that are very good for putting a dash of water or ink in somewhere, this uh, liquid chalk pastel liquid writer. So I wanted to achieve that chalk look, but every product I tried really didn't work. This is a wax resist pen, so you put it down and you can, you know, draw a shape or name or whatever you fancy. And uh, I've reviewed this before, but then you put watercolour over it and that area has a wax on it. So you can see that outlined in white and so you can create some cute effects with that. So then I've got this miscellaneous box of... I've got a ton of water brushes. I've been trying different brands, Pentel, Montmartre and uh, Kiritaki to see which ones I like the best. Uh, I've got the Derwent Burnisher and Blender, which is a, sort of a good value packet. comes with uh, the two burnisher pencils and two blenders, a little rubber and a little pencil sharpener. And I don't know where I've put those at the moment. Oh, here they are. Uh, so this is a Lyra. Splendor blender pencil. This one is a Lyra as well. So two Lyras. Car and Dash are white luminance, which is good for blending as well. This is the Derwent. I do like this blender pen, but my favourite still is the Car and Dash. Now I've had this one for I don't know a year or two, and I've hardly used any of it. And you'll see that it's broken. I bought it in the shop and even I just popped it in my handbag and it still broke. Um, by the time I undid it at home, five minutes away, it was just broken. But it's all pure blender, so you can just use this bit to blend. You'd, it doesn't have a wood casing like this. It's just all pure blender. So this one is my favourite and then I think the Derwent would be my second favourite. Just some spare feathers from the birds that drop them out in my garden. I sometimes use those to brush off the Prismacolor dust. And there's that other Derwent blender pen. And a Prismacolor blender. Uh, this is the Zig blender that goes with the Zig watercolors that we seen earlier. Uh, some Derwent blender pens. Got enough blenders here to sink a battleship and just some tortillions that you can also some stumps that you can also use to blend and when you've used these and got them a bit dirty you can rub a nail file or a piece of sandpaper or a sandpaper block over them to clean them up so i've got some general crafty type things packed a lot away already but this is what i've left out so a design knife some more pipettes, brushes, some deco foil where you, you apply this with uh, the deco foil glue. You can also use heat, but this is a product for those that don't have one of those uh, foiling machines. And then you rub it off to get a gold foil finish. So I've got that in a couple of different colours. And that's the glue. Now I did try it first of all with this glue and um, I had terrible experience with it. It just, it was hard to remove and whatnot so I bought that one then. Uh, these are just some little nail glitter stars that I was going to cut out and use on something. Um, ooh, a Betty Boop makeup mirror because I was looking for that and I put that in the wrong spot. Some sewing stuff in here because I've been embroidering some of the colouring pages. So I've got some embroidery thread and embroidery needles and sewing stuff there to uh, do embroidery with some of the colouring pages. So it adds a little bit of uh, sprinkly 
dust there and you can get that in all different colors some food coloring I've done a video before on coloring with food coloring but you can also color with nail polish so I've got lots of nail polishes that I've used uh, on pages before I don't know that I've shown anyone so it's nice and purple and sparkly and some more stencils just some little stars got that off eBay for a dollar uh, the gold leaf and uh, I think the silver leaf is underneath that that you use with that leafing glue to create like the actual mixed media effect with some stencils of love I think that was only very cheap these things are only like a dollar or two they're not expensive usually I get these things at the reject shop discount shop and when they're on sale and does everyone else collect these? The Book Depository bookmark. So I've got heaps of them and initially I used to throw them away. But then I thought, well, why not? I'll just keep them and, you know, practice colouring on them and just keep them, you know. So then I started collecting them and I did have a big stack that I don't know where I put them. But anyway, these are the more recent ones so a box of book depository bookmarks great for practicing and testing out your colors on i do have other things but they're like cheap supermarket pencils that i was going to cut up and make into jewelry and lots of crafty type stuff because i've had crafty stuff for way longer than i've been in the coloring uh, world and of course you know there's a ton of washi tape here as well but Quite frankly, I've ran out of room on the desk. So, I think I'll leave it at that. Until next time, happy colouring.